Let's go back and look at the matching circular motion again. It can help us find a simple harmonic oscillator's position as a function of time. Let's say at time t, the oscillator is at this location, which means the matching circular motion is over here. The shadow of it is over here. And we can form a right triangle like this. This part, the hypotenuse, is the radius of the circular motion, so it's the amplitude. The position x at this moment is this one here. And if this is an angle right here, angle theta, then this x here is the adjacent side. That means uh, if we want to find the position at this moment, x, it will be the hypotenuse times cosine of that angle. So it will be the hypotenuse amplitude times uh, cosine the angle over here. Now this angle here is going to be a function of time. As the time goes on, the angle is going to get bigger. If the object starts right here, that means the angle is going to be proportional to time. If you double the time, the angle is going to be twice as big. So the angle is going to be something, a constant, times time. And let's find that something. In this case, we use radians for the angle over here. And if I plot the position as a function of time, I would get a graph like this. Because cosine oscillates between negative 1 and 1, after I multiply it by the amplitude, that means that my position as a function of time oscillates between negative amplitude and the positive amplitude. And that's the cosine shape. This will be one cycle, and in the next cycle, it repeats itself again. And that means uh, this time over here must be one period. Which means uh, if I plug in the t equals to one period, I'm going to get this uh, whole cycle, and the cosine repeats itself in every two pi radians. Which means uh, if I plug in the t as the period, so if I plug in little t equals to period, the angle in here should equal to 2 pi, so the cosine would repeat itself, which means uh, what goes in the box must be 2 pi divided by the period. So that's what we put over here, 2 pi divided by the period. So this equation here is our position as a function of time. So for a simple harmonic oscillator, the position as a function of time oscillates uh, this kind of shape. We call it a sinusoidal motion because uh, the position as a function of time graph is a sine-cosine kind of shape. Now, this is a cosine if we start timing over here. But we don't have to start our timer over here. We can start our timer here or here or anywhere along the circle, which means uh, our graph, this axis, can be here, there, or anywhere. If I shift my axle to here, then my position versus time graph will be a sine function. If I shift this axis to here, it will be an upside down sine, so it will be a negative sine function. If I shift the axis to here, it will be an upside down cosine, so it will be a negative cosine. So our position as a function of time doesn't have to be a cosine function. It can also be a sine function. And it can be positive or a negative cosine or a sine. Of course, it can also be anything in between. But I don't think you have to worry about that in this course. By the way, let's just take a look at this thing over here. So this is the angular speed because this is the total angle traveled in one circle divided by the total time for that one circle. So angular distance traveled divided by the time, we get this thing we call angular speed. And uh, so if you read the books, you may see this thing that's uh, like a W, but it's a Greek letter omega. That's the symbol we use for angular speed. So that's omega for angular speed. I don't think you need to know this 
for the AP Physics B exam. Now let's try this one. The position versus time graph for a simple harmonic oscillator is given right here. See if you can draw the matching velocity versus time and acceleration versus time graphs for the same simple harmonic oscillator. When a simple harmonic oscillator oscillates, the position is not the only one that oscillates in a sinusoidal function. The velocity and the acceleration, they also oscillate in sinusoidal function. In kinematics, we learned that if you have a position versus time graph, we can find the velocity. How do we find the velocity from that graph? Velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. Since we already know the trend of the graph is like this, we just need to know how to start. So at the beginning, this right here, the slope is negative. So the velocity must start out negative. The slope over here is 0, so the velocity is 0. And then slope is positive. Okay, so the graph must be like this. The graph is a negative cosine graph. And then, how do we find the acceleration from a velocity graph? The acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So what's the slope over here? Zero. So the acceleration is zero. The slope over here is positive. Once we know these two points, we know the graph must be a sine graph. Some of you may have taken pre-calculus or calculus, so you know that the slope is the derivative. And this is a negative sine function. The slope is the velocity. When you take the derivative of a negative sine, you get a negative cosine. And then acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So if you take the derivative of the negative cosine, you're going to get a sine function. Of course, you obviously you do not have to know how to take derivative in order to answer this question. You can just use slope to do it. Now let's say this graph here, this is a 0.1 second, this is a 0.2 second. And uh, this value here is x equals to negative 0.5 meters. And up there, that's a positive 0.5 meters. And you need to write the position as a function of time. So in this case, the shape is a negative sine. And what goes here is the amplitude, because the sine oscillates between negative 1 and 1. And now the position goes from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. So you have to multiply the sine by 0.5 meters. And then the angle over here is a constant times the time t. And we know that if I plug in the t equals to period, and in this case, what is the period? The period is the time it takes for one whole cycle, so the period is 0.2 seconds. So if I plug in t equals to 0.2, my angle in here should go through one cycle, and if the angle, we use radians, so the angle is uh, 2 pi. That means uh, what goes here has to be 2 pi divided by 0.2. So that 0.2 cancels, and we get 2 pi. So what goes here is uh, 2 pi divided by 0.2, that will be 10 pi. So this is the position as a function of time the equation for that graph.